This is the podcast, not an interview. This is a conversation. No gimmicks, just reasons. 84 reasons. Come holler at me. of 84 Reasons. Every week I sit down with a former, current, a future Florida Gator. I don't know if, I don't know if I can top this one. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Look, my next guest, I got to go through it. 2001 D, uh, SEC Defensive Player of the Year. Three-time first-team All-SEC. Uh, Two-time first-team All-American. That's 99 and 2001. The most sacks of Florida Gator history. Florida Gator All-American. You know him as Alex Brown. I know him as AB or that one three. 45 and a half sacks in the NFL. Spent about eight years with them, with them Shot Town boys. Spent one year in the NOLA. But a teammate of mine who we're going to get into how he used to take care of his boy in practice, make me look like I, I belong out here. The great Alex Brown. What's going on with you today, AB? I'm good, man. How you doing? Thanks for having I'm me good. on. I'm good. I'm good, AB. I got you don't even remember. I got I gotta go into it though. 99, right? I come on my visit. Yep. Right. I walk in this room and you sitting there playing this game. You playing this video game and I'm playing with you. Marcus Aquino Johnson come in. Yep. And we young, right? We we are, I don't really know what's going on. I don't, I'm not really used to this recruiting thing. Trey Orr, we walk outside. Mm-hmm. Trey Orr grabs me and go, boy, you know who that was? And I'm like, what? He said, that's Alex Brown. And I'm like, Alex Brown, I said, I said, this is what I said. I said, come on. I know Alex Brown at the end. And I said, wait, 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 wait. That's the dude that had the five sacks, right? Yeah, I said. That ain't good, bro. That guy that had five sets against Tennessee, I'm going to have to deal with that. That's not That's not going to be <laughs> – but I will say this. You were a superstar of Florida, but when people think superstar, they think they act a certain way, treat people certain. Man, you all – the same smile you got now you had back then, the only thing I regretted was this. First day of tour day, one-on-ones. I said, listen, I need A.B. and Kiyana to go way down. I need them to go way down at the end. I'm going to need Marcus Aquino Johnson to come. I don't need none of that. But – A.B., man, like, with, with what your career became, like, you get to Florida, man, you was athlete in high school. Did you know that you were going to become what you became, like, the all-time leading soccer, SEC defense player? I mean, you start your story career. Did you see yourself having that type of career, even after red shirt in your freshman year? Absolutely not. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> no way. I, I actually, when I came there, and I, I played quarterback in high school, right? So I came there, and I'm – I play, I'm playing linebacker. I was one of the top, if not the top linebacker coming out of high school. But when I got, and I say that not because I'm trying to pump myself up. I say that because when I got to Florida and then you look at Javon Curse and you're like, hold on. If he's a linebacker, <laughs> then I can't be a linebacker. <laughs> like, like you see somebody and you're like, I don't know, man. Like this is a little different. And then you see him run, and you see Mike Peterson, and you see Johnny Rutledge, and you're like, man, I don't know, man. I mean, and then Coach Spurrier, um, I'm going to tell, tell you where it changed that. Where things changed, and it gave me a different perspective, because linebacker, I didn't – I thought I could play it, but once I got to that, to that level, the SEC, mm, I don't know. This might be a little more difficult. When it changed was – I think it was Tim Bochamp, in the Florida State game in 98, okay, Marcus Outson was the quarterback. We get to that game and something went on. Either one of them had food poisoning, one of them got hurt during the, the first series of the game, and Coach Spurrier comes to me. He's like, Alex, listen, this is what we need you to do. When you hear the call, right or left, I want you to go away from it, and all I want you to do is just rush the quarterback, just go get the quarterback. All right, I, I can do that. So now you got Javon and myself on the field. That was the first time we were on the field at the same time. And because I was playing Sam Blinebacker up until then, that's where things changed. I got two and a half sacks in that game, and things kind of changed for me there. Going into the offseason, into my sophomore year, that's when Coach Spurrier kind of came to me and made that suggestion that kind of, you going to do this, but I'm going to make it seem like you making the decision um, type deal and said, hey, we want you to move to defensive end. Um, give you a little perspective on how my dad is. We called my pops um, because I didn't want to do it. I was going to transfer. I was like, no, nah, I'm done. I, I don't want to do this. Javon Curse is leaving early. This is my chance to start at Sam Linebacker. So we called my dad 
And my dad's like, um, you remember when Coach Spurrier was sitting at the dining room table and you told him you do whatever you can to help the team? I said, yes, sir. He hung the phone up. That gives you an idea of how my dad is. And from there, I looked at Coach Spurrier and I said, well, I guess I'm playing defensive end. <laughs> so we kind of took off from there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you come in as a linebacker. You talk, yeah. you talk about some names. You Mike P, Johnny Rutledge, Javon yeah. Curtis. Somebody gets hurt. They put you at the end. You get two and a half sacks. Mm-hmm. Coach Spurrier, you go, wait a minute, bro. I got Javon on one side. I got AB on the other side. You in, And you end up becoming the all-time leading sack guy. People talk about versatility all the time. Was it was it your dad just saying you said this right hung up? Was it that all right? I did say that I don't even want to deal with this dude. But at the same time, it's not like he was a slouch AB either. It's like, bruh, um, he's rushing better. Like Javon, for those of you who don't Javon Kurt Freak, just whatever Javon do come out of a lab. That boy, they, I don't know where they yeah, make those. Agree. Yeah. <laughs> but how much better did your game become? Because the hardest thing in college is accepting your role, not having one. Right. When you said, all right, I got this one three on. I'm a, when, when, when you finally started honing on your skills, because you had that curl, I call it that curled up stance. Like, boy, I said, A.B., whether it's a run or pat, that boy ready to come off the rod. You had you had this thing to where when you hit a guy, you had that joke. You, 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 you hit him, and it's like Jordan, but you had a knack for rushing the pass. Like, you, I don't know what you did to them guards. I mean, going up against Kenyatta Walker in two days, man, that, that's going to get anybody ready. But when you but, – but not – okay, it's 99. Mm-hmm. And I, this is what I'm like. This is what I'm doing. What is it like having five sacks and a pick in one game? Like, what is that feeling like? Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you that. I'm gonna tell you that. Um, nothing like I've ever felt, and I didn't feel anything after that, honestly. But right after Coach Spurrier and I, um, after that phone call, Coach Spurrier turned to me and he sat. He said, "Alex, there's three people in the NFL get, that get paid." He said, "The quarterback, of course. That's who gets paid because he's the face of the franchise." the guy that can protect the blind side of the quarterback and the guy that can go get the quarterback. Those are the three positions. Now, everybody get paid, but the guys that get that real money, when you really look at it, those are the guys that get paid that crazy money, right? The pass rushers, the guys that can protect the quarterback and your quarterback. So that was all he needed to say for me. And then it was like, all right, let's ride. So the Tennessee game come, and it's really interesting that the Tennessee game even happened. Because if you remember, that is Bullard. I'm competing with that is Bullard, a.k.a. Titus O'Neal right now um, at this point. But I'm competing with him. And he, so he gets Coach Spurrier's jersey. He get the number 11 jersey. So they unretire Coach Spurrier's jersey. First of all, they move me to defensive end. Then the two guys I'm competing against, they unretire the old ball coach's jersey, give it to him. And I'm like, well, hell, I might be, I might be in trouble here, you know. <laughs> Derek Chambers on the other side. Derek Chambers is 295, 300. He benched the weight room faster than an ox. Like he was, I'm like, I can't do nothing with him. So it's Thaddeus and I. But I think in my mind, I'm thinking, well, Thaddeus got the inside track on this one. So first game, forget who we were playing. Coach Spurs like, listen, Thaddeus is gonna start. I'm hot. Because I thought I should have started. But he's like, all right. I'm like, all right, let's go. And Thaddeus has a sack. I think I had a sack and a half. The next game, I started. And then I had two sacks Thaddeus had. I don't think he had one. Or maybe he had a half a sack. So then I get to start. Whoever whoever won that battle in those two games, they were going to get the opportunity to start in, um, in the Tennessee game, which was the third game of the season. So that's where everything just kind of took off. And during the game, I'm, I look for stuff during the game. If, you, if you're not looking for it, you're not going to see it. So I'm looking for little tips and little tidbits where I can, I can take advantage of, right? So I find something. I come over and I tell um, – it was either Dre and then I told Coach um, – oh, gosh, my D-line coach. I told him, I was like, listen, I think I see something. I'm going to just go. So don't kill me if I jump off sides, right? And I didn't even make a play on it. But it was right. Like, the timing was right. It was just a feel for how he was making the call, and it was loud in there. So it's like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And I did. And things just kind of kind of went. Now, the first two sacks I think I got had nothing to do with this. It was just me rushing. All I knew was one thing, just get on the edge and run. Um, the next three were, like, I had a little edge because they were tipping it a little bit, you know? 
So, but that game, I mean, I, I know everybody talks about that game and getting the pick and getting the five sacks is great. But I get, I get pinholed into that game a lot. And what I tell people is that if you take away that game, erase that game from my career, I'm still the all-time sack guy in at Florida, you know? If you erase that game. So people act like it's just, not, not you, I'm just saying like, like mm -hmm. when I'm talking about my career at Florida, people talk about it as if that was the game. Whereas if you took that game away, I'm still the all-time leading sack guy there. So it's just that game put me on the map, but it wasn't my career. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I think the thing about that game, OAB, is <clears throat> most of the time a guy have a great career and he won't have a signature moment, though. I mean, he had some good games. You just had a signature moment. And yeah. I remember all y'all boys had ball heads for the game. I mean, yes. was playing safe and straight. Like, y'all, it's almost like they just coming off their national championship. I got to ask this. Have you ever met T. Martin in person? Have you ever met him in person? You know what? I have, I have not met him, but I live in Buford right now, okay? And word on the street is he lives here. I still haven't ran into oh, him. You know you live down. Like, Listen, you, when I, you, know, you know where you live. We like he live down the street. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. I mean, but at the <laughs> same time, him, I'm gonna post a picture about it. <laughs> so awesome. what's gonna happen is y'all gonna end up going to the same pubs or something. Go down the same aisle, look down and look up. He go, yeah, that's him. Yeah. <laughs> like you, yeah, yeah. I mean, man, listen. And at the same time, though. That's what I can say about you, though, as a player, right? You, you hear about the SEC, you get there, right? Mm -hmm. I get on campus, first person I see is Dre. I'm like, man, now, now listen, y'all, we ain't been like two or three years, you know, younger than y'all, but y'all been in that Rob Glass program. I'm like, bro, yes. listen, I'm like, mama, listen, yeah, this is dude named Thaddeus Bullet. All he do is walk around greased up with some drawers on. The boy, boy <laughs> man, like an eight pack. But then I meet you, right? I said, this is thing. I said, D Lee, I used to be like, D Lee, man, how was AB? He said, listen, bro. Most players in front of you, you can't stand them. You can't help it. He said, if you don't like A.B., it's something wrong with you. He said, because this what A.B. knows. He going to work harder than you. He know he better than you. He going to coach you on the field like A.D. Lee, but I'm need that stance to get it. Because I think at a certain point, y'all helped us realize, yeah. do we reflections of each other out here, bro? Like, listen, right. if y'all like, I don't care if you play offense. We mm. got to look a certain way no matter what side of the ball we was on. And y'all just, you, listen, and I got to say this for those of you, this, AB is a part of the Vaunted 9-7 crew. They were the deepest five people. Look, you're going to get welcomed in Florida. I ain't going to get into it, but it went for like AB, I want to say Moody, uh, Big, uh, Big Money. But y'all was like 30 people. Yep. And this is the thing. Somebody go, d Lee call me and say, yo, AB up in uh, OSL. He, he by himself? Yeah, you need to get up here. All right. So I get on my little school to get up there. As soon as I walk in, you look at it like, what y'all think it's going to be? Put your hands on there. What, what y'all, that, we had, listen, man, the way you welcomed us to college, man, I just know this. Max Starks, for those of you who don't know, is a big human being. Six, nine, big boy. Oh, man. I, I'm not, not going to get his, I'm not going to say what happened. But but he, he used to talk real loud for that one day. And after that, I said, listen, bring your boys down because he's right over there now. You talking yeah. to me in the loud. I go, because when I, because you talk, but he, anyway, I just got to say, man, people like you are needed when we get to college because we don't know what to do. Like, we talented, but we don't know what to do. Everybody, oh, we the number one recruiting mm. class. We think we finna play. Yeah. You, know, you look like you're like, boy, number one, you ain't, you don't even know how to practice, right? You don't know what you're doing. Y'all got, y'all got high school muscles. Y'all ain't y'all can't get nobody involved. You well, when did you when did you realize that? When did you take on the whole mentor role? Because people say I don't want to do that, but it's like something natural you have to kind of become when you in college. I tell you what, man, that, that's really interesting that you say that because I've always been that way. I've always been that way of I'm gonna tell you, like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna tell you the right way to do it, right? And then because I truly not arrogant, but inside. I believe I'm better than you. So, I mean, I just don't see the reason of me trying to tell you the wrong thing to do to have you look bad on film so I can win. I don't see the, I don't see the gratification in that. The gratification comes from when you know exactly what you're doing and you're at your best and I still win. That's the gratification for me. And that, and, and honestly, like, hey, I'm telling you the truth. Listen to me. It was, it bit me in the butt. In, in, the, in the league, 
because in 2006, started every game of the season. Went to the Super Bowl, started the Super Bowl. The next year, my backup took over for 07, okay, for the 07 season. I Listen, I'm not telling you wrong. If I believe I can beat you, I'm going to beat you, and we're just going to ride with it. Now, the coaches thought he was better. Now, we got to ride this out. And then he didn't make it through the season. His stats for the first 13 games, I beat him the last three games at what his stats was in 13. Mine, I beat him in that. So, like, that came back to bite me. But what you was talking about with OSL, all it did, all that did was build a bond where this right here happened in 12 hours. Like, it's just a call. You know what I mean? It built a brotherhood that it's never broken. You know what I mean? That's what the 97, 98, 99, 2000 class and so on, that's what we were building by that. I need to trust you. I need you to be able to trust me. And once that happens, it's forever. You know what I mean? Like, no matter what, like, we all, we all felt a certain way when we heard the news about Rishay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We all felt to say, like, we lost a piece of ourselves, and that's um, that's going to continue to happen. I mean, because that, that is a part of life. It's not, it, it's a part of life leaving this world. So, but we'll all always feel that way. And, brother, you know you can call me whenever, oh, just yeah. like oh, a lot yeah. of other players oh, that yeah. we play with on, on those teams. So, it's, it's what it is, man. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. This is when I feel as though I arrived in, in this floor. You know, we, we have, you know, you in the league now, y'all boys. Listen, that 2006, is that 2001 team? I said, I, I'm going to say this. I don't care how nobody feel. Listen, mm -hmm. we play Tennessee 9-11. If we play when we're supposed to play, I know what, we know what happened. Yeah. I'll, I don't know if we win in that. We going. I'm telling you. I ain't going to have to do with it. But we, but we going. But I will say this, A.B. This is when I arrived. This is when I feel as though I arrived. It's something about players getting respect from former players. You just... We have our bowl game. I catch the little pass. I see you the next year. You say, Benjamin, boy, I like the play you did. To me, that stuff, because in my mind, I'm like, A.B. said he saw me, bro. Like, because no matter what, we respected y'all. See, yep. we didn't have that. Oh, man, he only playing over me. It wasn't no coaches. That, no, y'all boys was. I said, because the Barack, because you come in as a freshman, you're doing everything with freshmen. You think you look good. This Spurs yep. say, all right, upper class, but show them how it's supposed to look. <laughs> I'm like, we wasn't even moving. But at the same time, you know, that's a standard. What that's a standard. And then, you know, when you it's like the it's the, the person you were and the player you were weren't that different. Most people, they different people. I said, A B man, he's smiling on the field, he's smiling away from the field. But you always like it's like Spurrier. I never heard Spurrier say A B pick it up. Never. No. Like, I, I I ain't never hear that one time because you like, bro, I ain't no slouch. Listen, you can't wear the one three. But you win this. We win, you know, we win team issue numbers. You win one three at the end, you got to be a bad boy. Plus, we argue about this all the time. You know, I do, I'm blessed enough to do sports talk radio. And I love David Pollard, right? Played mm -hmm. against him. But listen, them Georgia people, I said, listen, man, I said, listen, y'all think I'm biased, right? Y'all think I'm biased. I get it. He's the most decorated. He is. Again, yeah. three time first of all American. I said, if I got, they said, they said, being if you got one player for defensive end, this is what they said. Do you want Miles Garrett or do you want David Pollock? I said, I want Alex Brown. What? <laughs> uh, listen to me. Listen, listen to me. So then we had Max on. Brought Max on the show. Max go. They go. They say, Max, this is, this is, can I make this up? Max, you got one DN. Who you want? You want Miles Garrett? You want Jadavion Klein? He said, I want Alex Brown. This is what Max said. I want Alex Brown. <laughs> I appreciate that. Because no, no, AB, listen, bro. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. We used to do one-on-one to two days. Mm -hmm. I said, how was him and Kayata hitting each other that hard? They standing right there. For, I ain't dealing with that, bro. I'm not being, come on down here, get you some work with AB. No, nah, I'm good, man. Um, Y'all, uh, I'm trying, I got a little bit of confidence. You're trying to take it from, give me DB, <laughs> give me D-Mac. I, I could deal with them a little bit, but I, listen, I'll be remiss, man. You played for Chicago, but you played for one of the most storied mm -hmm. franchises, Monsters of the Midway, Soldier Field. What is it like playing you and Erlach and Pig, Briggs and Tommy Harris and P Peanut Tillman? Mm -hmm. And you played in the Super Bowl, man. What was those experiences like? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Coming from Florida, where uh, everything at Florida was built around or the, the hype was around Coach Spurrier and his offense. Rightfully so, right? Because that, that was the focus. When you go to Chicago, 
it's all it, it's that same energy, but it's on the defensive side. But in college, there isn't a mistake. Like you can't make two mistakes because if you can make a mistake and you give up a touchdown, you probably ain't gonna get it back. Whereas at Florida, if you make a mistake, Coach Spurrier will turn around and three plays later he'll get it back for you. You know. So coming to Chicago is a little different. But then when by the time 05 hit, I got drafted in 2002. I get there April 2002. It's snowing. I'm a Florida boy. Okay. I, I couldn't, I, I'm like, how am I going to do this? I have no idea how this is going to work out because this is crazy. It's cold. And truth, I'm, I'm going to tell you this and everybody is watching. I'm, I'm going to let you know because I really, really appreciate everything you said about me. And I really believe I was that player and I, I had a lot of confidence in myself. But my first training camp was not confident at all. Okay. I'm at training camp and I call my now wife, girlfriend at the time, and like, babe, I can't do this. Like, I, I might need to get a job. These boys whooping my butt out here. Like, I can't. There's always somebody that you're looking at. You're like, yep, I'm going to go against him because I might be able to get that win. I was the person that everybody was looking at. <laughs> I want to get that win. <laughs> like, it was not good. And I'm talking about crying on the phone to my wife that I can't do this. This is a problem. And I got to wake up in six hours and go do it again, knowing I'm going to get my tail whooped. And just those conversations with her um, calmed me down a little bit, right? Reminded me of who, who I am. And stop trying to be who they want you to be. Be who you are. And then if that works, that works, you know? And it didn't turn over. It didn't change in two weeks or a week. But eventually, it started to come. And as I finished, I started nine games my rookie year. Um, but as I went into my second year, the confidence was there. And things started to change for me. So it's you always need those people in your corner that you can lean on. Um, you always got to have them people because they, they help you in those hard times. And you got to make sure you remember them when everything's going good. You know, so because they're there, they're the ones that's in those ups and downs, you know, so uh, I am very thankful for her. My senior year, the reason I stayed in college, um, I thought was because I wanted a really good team in 01, which you mentioned earlier, because we did have it. And I did want that that sack record like I, I wanted it because those things don't go away. The NFL will be there. No. Yeah. The NFL will be there. I, I wanted that sack record. So but what I didn't realize was that. My wife and I come March and we'll be married 20 years. I wouldn't be with her if I hadn't stayed that year. We wouldn't have our son who is now playing baseball at Mercer had I not stayed that year. So I'm thinking I'm staying for the sack record and for to have a really good team in 01. Not at all. I'm staying because my future life 20 years from now, this is why I'm staying, you know? Like that, my, like it's just, it's unbelievable when I really look back at it and I think that I had a plan. And the good man upstairs had a totally different plan. He just made me think that it was my plan, you know? So, but playing with, uh, Erlach is one of my really good friends. I'm going to get back to Chicago. Erlach is one of my really good friends, uh, Peanut, Vasher. We're all on this text chain. We still talk to this day. Playing on a defense, that when you're number one defense in the league now, I'm talking about in the league. We're the number one defense in the league. It's, man. Truby, I know you was on some teams where y'all offense, y'all go in and y'all know y'all about to put up 40. True, I was on I was on defenses that we go in and y'all would be lucky if y'all get 10. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's how we looking at the other team. It's it's a tough road to hold when you got all those players on defense. What is that like though, Eb? Though, like you say that now, but what mm. what is that like? Though? like people, <clears throat> the, the difference in college and pro is expectation. People have no clue to say, if I'm the number one defense in the NFL, I'm the number one defense in the world. I'm the, I got the best defense, but y'all had it on all levels. But one thing, though, you had five picks. Y'all had a fun defense. Like, it was a, it was a game. We were watching the team. I think we had to play, y'all. Y'all played San Francisco. T-Jack, love T-Jack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah listen, listen. So we watching this, right? They put it up. <coughs> and we looking. We like, good God. I mean, it was so bad. Coach was like, we I mean, he said, listen, it's gonna be rough to move this ball with this defense. We ain't gonna look like that. It was you had a pick in that game, but yes. 
I say this about defense. When when you got a defense like y'all's, y'all having fun while beating the hell out of people. Like it's fun to y'all. Like y'all knocking. You got linebackers that do. You got a six four linebacker and freaking uh, Erlacher. I yeah. mean Briggs don't get enough credit for what he was. He was everywhere. everywhere. I think y'all had the defensive end that had the, the, the African, the funny lad. I cannot say his Ooh. last name. Only yeah. yeah. Listen, y'all. And you and you had Bash, then you had Peanut. I said, look, man. I coach you to say this. We're going to try to run the ball, try to get the hell out of here. Why? Because I'm telling you, if you put it in the air, y'all will let people catch it so y'all can smash it. No, just let them catch it. That's back <laughs> when you can hit people. Now, that's back when you had a bang eight. Yes. You ain't doing that kind of stuff. But what was that feeling like knowing you was on the number one defense on one of the most prestigious franchises, knowing the man with the Chicago Bears? It was unbelievable. Um, in, in all reality, we were – I'm, I'm going to give people, the people that's watching, like a real idea of – how good that defense was because we say they were good. There are good defenses. Uh, every year there's good defenses and it's relative. If you lead the league, then you're the top defense, but you can be the top defense in the league giving up 15 points a game. We we were the top defense in the league giving up 10 points a game, 11 points a game. Like we were when they they put up they put um a slide up and the top 10 defenses in the Super Bowl era, we were six. Now, <clears throat> to put it in perspective, we gave up 30 points the last game of the season in 05. We were 18 points. Had we given up 18 points or less, we would we would have broken the 1985 Bears record of points given up. Coach Smith takes all the starters out <laughs> after the first drive, and they and they score 30. You talking about mad? We were oh, yeah. upset because you don't get chances to, to make history like that, you know? So we're still upset about it. Like, we still talk about it to this day. But, um, like, in those, in, those, um, in those moments, you want to take advantage of it. And hey, it, was, it was fun. Uh, you got Erlacher. People want to know why we were good. Well, Erlacher is in the Hall of Fame. Lance Briggs is probably going. Peanut Tillman's probably going. We didn't even name Tommy Harris, Mike Brown. Chris Harris, we're talking about, I mean, Ian Scott was on that team. Like, like Tank Johnson. There were some monsters on that team. Yes. And, like, you put all those guys together and we're all 25, 26, 27, and you're in the prime of your career, and we all held each other accountable. That was it. Nobody was too big, even Erlacher. If he messed up, we jumped on him because he rarely messed up. So, <laughs> like, you remember, you remember Javon. Like, Javon yes. was a freak of – Erlacher is an – Oh, I, oh, I, you, I tell you, man, Javon boy, and Erlacher are the two most gifted players I've ever seen in my life. I've ever played with, I'll say that, because Julius Peppers is – Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, JP, yeah. Is a, JP is on a – Yeah. But I got to say, though, man, AB, you – y'all went to that Super Duper, man. Y'all played Peyton Manning and company. Yeah. We know Devin has to – what is that like, though? Like, you in the NFC Championship game, man, hard fought, y'all get that dub. Y'all yeah. going to Miami. So you got a Florida boy going back to Florida. It's South Florida. South mm -hmm. Florida. What what is uh two parts? What is what is um media day like and what was it like running out there with that Super Bowl patch on your jersey, man? Man, I am telling you the most interesting part was the time when Ian Scott came up to me when we were playing in the NFC championship game uh against the Saints. And it was just a simple statement, and he said, We're going to the Super Bowl. And it's only three minutes to go, and you're so locked into the game, right? But then you look up, and you're like, I think the score was 39-14 or something. And with three minutes to go, you look up, and you're like, holy shit, like, we are. <laughs> you know, like, like we're going. Yeah. I'm talking, true, I'm talking about, like, since a kid, like, four, five, six years old, this is all you ever wanted was to play in a Super Bowl, and that is going to happen. And it's the craziest feeling Ever, ever being on the field, the whole the whole week with the whole week with the uh, with media day is pain in the butt. Honestly, it's weird <laughs> questions. It's a lot of time you're spending. It's everything that's not about the game. Honestly, that's what it is. But once you get past that and you can get back into, we're creatures of habit, right? So when we <clears throat> when we would when we would get off of our game during the week. It would kind of throw us off. So I didn't, I ain't like that. Like, let me do my thing. What I do every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, leading up to Sunday, 
to play the game. I needed all this other stuff to stop. So we were ready for that stuff to stop so we can, like, home back in because we're playing Peyton Manning. Like, we, we need all the time we can get because Peyton Manning is that dude. So, but, like, once you got past that, then sitting on the – standing on the sideline and – I had kickoff, you know, all the lights go off. That moment was another moment that just burned into my memory because I remember watching it on TV and it's every time they kicked it off, all the lights in the stadium would just start flickering and you see the flashes going. It's just, it's unbelievable being on the field. It was short lived because we went crazy after that because Devin Hester took it to the house. So <laughs> like yeah, he took man. it to the house and we're like, but like that's a wrap. Like, cause we were so we were so confident on defense. You gonna give us a seven point lead? Oh, it's a wrap. It's over. Y'all, y'all in trouble. Like that. And then Payne come out and he threw a pick the first drive. And we were like, oh yeah, y'all in trouble. We we about we about to whoop y'all. And he just with our defense, you can't do what we're not giving you. If we give you a three yard little curl route, you better take it. And that's what he started doing after that first drive. And our offense couldn't do anything. And it just kind of you, – you could feel the game slipping away from you at that point. It's like, man, oh, this game no end, boy. We're going to be in trouble. But with all that going on, and we give up our defense, giving up 200 yards rushing to a Peyton Manning-led football team, meaning that, well, Peyton, he's leading the team. It's a passing football team. We gave up 200 yards rushing on them to them. We had three – three turnovers, and with three minutes to go in the game, we got the ball. We're only down 22-17. Now, unfortunately, Rex throws a pick that gets taken to the house, which makes that game seem like it was more lopsided than what it was. But with three minutes to go in the game, we still had an opportunity to win. And we had the best offense, or we had the best defense, we had the best special teams. Our offense was ranked number two in the, in the league at 27 points a game. I still believe we had the best team, but the best team don't always win. So, I mean, I think we saw that with the Giants, both of the Giants, previous, uh, last two uh, Super Bowl wins, the best team don't win. Yeah. I, I think we saw it this year. I thought the Eagles yeah. were the best yeah. team. Yeah. But when you have somebody like a Patrick Mahomes, like a Peyton Manning, they can win a football game for you. Hey, man, you done said a lot, man. I, I mean, I think the thing that stands out the most, you said, I thought I went back my senior year to win a national championship and get that sack record. But it's, it was to meet my wife that I'm, my future was right there. 20 years later, y'all still going to show your son yep. at Mercer. All-time leading sack guy. Won an NFC championship. Went to a Super Bowl. Uh -huh. What is Alex Brown most proud of at this point? Because you got to look at your life and go, I, I see, you know, Florida, I mean, uh, Florida, um, you know, Florida Athletic Hall of Fame, I think they didn't recognize you as a, as a Gator great, uh, SEC great up there in Atlanta. What is Alex Brown most proud of at this point? Man, that's a that's a hell of a question, man. God I tell you. I, my family, it has to be. It has to be. I mean, I think we, my, my wife and I, we've um, been married in March, March 14th. We've been married 20 years. And um, that don't, that don't happen in our, in our industry a lot, you know, so uh, being able to stick through the ups and downs of um, being married in a in a with this type of lifestyle is is difficult at times. Um, and we're able to weather that. And we have four kids that are absolutely amazing, and they're striving to be the best they can be. Um, they they know what Daddy did, um, but I push them to do their thing. Like our son plays um plays baseball. I, he didn't want to play football. Okay, we move on. I, I don't bring it up again. Uh, my daughters, I mean, they're playing, they're soccer girls and they're just rolling in soccer and they're doing their thing there. But I'd say my family, man, um, I never thought like playing football at, at in the NFL was a dream for sure. The biggest dream that I ever had that I didn't know I had was having a family like I have, you know, having the life that I currently sit in right now well, I wake up in the morning, I got a beautiful wife, I have beautiful kids, I got healthy kids, a healthy wife, and a life that, honestly, I sit out, I sit out on my front porch and I'm just like, how does a kid from White Spring get so lucky, you know what I mean, or be so blessed? So, and I, I, I really am thankful for it. I don't, I, I, man, I, 
if I do take it for granted, I, I pray that uh, God don't allow me to take it for granted because I don't want to. I don't want to take it for granted because we're not here very long and I want to appreciate every second that I have with my family and, and my kids and my wife. Amy, I can say this right now, man. First and foremost, I appreciate you coming on, man. So I'm, I'm always, there are certain players and people that I look to emulate. I'm, I'm chasing them no matter what. It's something about you. Like you got that. I always tell people this. Like you in the restaurant, I order something. You come out before your your order come out before what you says, and I can see the smoke coming from the plate. I say, man, what the hell is that? That's an AB because you about as genuine as it get, man. Like most people, you know, the NFL will change you quicker than anything because of the lifestyle, the money. Yeah. I remember we had a conversation one time. I think you, I think, I think your your career in uh, Chicago was coming to you. Like, I mean, you asked me about Kyle Vanderbosch. I said. Hey, you about to come to Tennessee? I would have loved that because certain players are on the team for more than just their talent. Like, you're talented as hell, obviously, but you the type of player to where you got this juice, man. It's natural. I said, listen, man, I need some of that AB because AB always smiling. If you have a bad day, it's a bad day. Like, AB was pissed off with somebody who did it, right? Because yeah. that don't usually happen. But you said, man, my future was why I came back to Florida. 20 years of marriage. That's what I'm celebrating you for the most because what happens is, yes, we myth killers. Yes, we got these stereotypical things about us being black men. We don't care about our kids. I appreciate the dad you are, the husband you are, you know, Mercer. For those who don't know, making George. I know about making, oh, I-16, oh. <laughs> you know, but man, never stop being you, man. I'm always rooting for you because yeah. there are certain people in life, man. Life is better when they better. I, I believe you make people's lives better around you. You all listen, listen. I know, I know. Listen, you got AB that played with the Pittsburgh Steelers. No, our AB went down there to UF. I, I, AB eighty four. Yeah. I don't know what the hell wrong with him. We got the AB one three. I'm a, I'm a deal with him. I am being true. He is Alex Brown, all time leader sack, sack at Florida. What three time first team All SEC, two time first team All American. Mm. SEC. Mm. I mean, listen, well, listen. I think won that SEC championship back in two thousand. We talking about. Yes. University of Florida Hall of Fame, 45 and a half sacks, five picks, like 15 force farmers, played for the Monsters of the Midway. I know my producer Ryan is loving this because we got back-to-back -back bears on this show. But more importantly, man, a hell of a man, man. And I'm and listen, y'all can pick who y'all want to. If I got one defensive end, I'm going with one three. Because I, I, I've seen him in person. Nothing against y'all Georgia people. Nothing against y'all, you know, Texas and people. Y'all the lost y'all mind. You think I'm finna go against? Because if I pick somebody other than AB, I'm gonna get a call. Troop is like that. No, not on this end. Because I don't listen. Because you got the eye test and you got the real test, and I got both. AB boy, you know I love you. I appreciate you coming through. Love you too, man. Thank you, baby. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.